Excellent! So let's say that you're an early adopter and you have picked up a GTX 980 recently and you want to overclock it. Or you're considering a GTX 980, but you want to see how well they overclock first before you jump in. Either way, this video is for you, since I'm going to be using an EVGA GeForce GTX 980 SC with their ACX 2.0 cooler. We're going to start off with a closer look at this card and what makes it different from the NVIDIA reference design. Reference design means the design provided by NVIDIA who makes the GPU. Here's a look at it. Add in board partners like EVGA that manufacture cards with NVIDIA GPUs have the option of creating their own designs though, which is what EVGA did here. According to EVGA, their specially designed ACX 2.0 card is 26% cooler, 36% quieter, and uses 250% less fan power compared to the reference design. It also does a cool trick where the fans don't spin up at all until the card reaches a certain temperature, about 60 degrees Celsius, so if you're not taxing the card it will actually be completely silent. Each of the fans also has 11 specially designed fan blades, they have a new swept design to reduce noise, and a redesigned motor to reduce friction and increase RPM capabilities. Here's a look at the new fans with see-through hubs for a visual representation of the new and more efficient 6-lot 3-phase motor. The GTX 980 is based on NVIDIA's GM204 GPU, which is built on the new Maxwell architecture. Maxwell has proven to be faster all around, but one of my favorite improvements is the reduced power consumption. 980's TDP is just 165 watts. This card is a little bit more than 10.5 inches long and it sports 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory on a 256-bit bus. Power requirements are two 6-pin PCI Express connectors, it has PCI Express Gen 3 and 4-way SLI support, and video connectors include a single dual-link DVI, one HDMI 2.0, and three full-sized DisplayPort 1.2 outs. Underneath the cooling fans, you have a couple large and dense aluminum fin stacks, five copper heat pipes, and a large block that makes contact with the GPU. All of these elements work together to keep the GPU memory and power delivery cool so that you can overclock. So let's overclock. So for starters here, I'm gonna make some assumptions. Uh, first is that your computer is all put together and up and running, that's important. Uh, but also that you have Windows installed, that you have Windows up to date, uh, and that you have all your drivers installed. So here's Windows Update, for example. Just make sure you've run that and you've got everything up to date. Uh, you can also go to your NVIDIA control panel and make sure that you're running the latest version of the NVIDIA drivers that are available, which are right over here. So 344.16 is what I'm working with today. Um, apart from drivers and everything, you're going to want to also get some software if you're going to be uh, overclocking. Now, there's some monitoring software that I like to run. Uh, CPU-Z is one of them, and that will just give you some information on screen about uh, your system in general. Uh, the CPU ID folks who make CPU-Z also have software called Hardware Monitor. It's another one that I like just because it gives uh, a nice full layout of uh, all of the hardware in your system, uh, temperatures, voltages, and it will also store minimums and maximum values, and it lets you easily clear those to go back to starter. So it's just a good way to keep an eye on things. Uh, GPU-Z is another really important one that you're going to want just to verify everything uh, that's available from Tech Power Up, so go ahead and download that one too. Um, the last bit of software you're going to need is the actual overclocking software itself. For this video, I'm using EVGA's Precision X16 or version 16 software, um, but there's also other software that's available. Since I'm using an EVGA card, this is what I'm going to be using, but um, MSI also has their Afterburner software. Asus has GPU Tweak. There's other ones that are out there too. Those are some of the more well-known ones, but since it's an EVGA card, let's go with EVGA software. Okay, I do have one last bit of software I'm going to be using, and that's an actual benchmark. Uh, for the purposes of today's test, I'm going to be using 3DMark. Now, benchmarking and, and, and overclocking go hand in hand, because you need some way to verify or to determine, once you've initiated your overclock, that it's actually doing you some good. So running a benchmark will be a good way of going from A to B, and telling, or at least verifying for yourself that you've actually improved the performance of your system. Uh, Unigen's Heaven and Unigen's Valley Benchmark Benchmarks also very, very popular for this particular type of purpose. But with everything installed and set up like that, oh, by the way, um, if you're using 3D Mark, you can actually access normal Fire Strike um, just with the free version of that software. So that's also a good way to make sure that the benchmark you're running, if you're comparing your systems to, say, your friends, uh, a preset benchmark like 3D Mark 
will give you a very apples to apples comparison from one to the other. Of course, there's a whole debate about synthetic versus non-synthetic. We're not going to get into that today. We're just going to go ahead and set up to benchmark. So, um, of course, I'm going to load up CPU, uh, CPU IDs, hardware monitor. I have that running over here on the side so I can see my min and max values. CPU Z, of course, I also have up. So here's where you can see um, the actual hardware I'm running today, Intel Core i7-5960X, which is running at uh, 4.5 gigahertz. Uh, the motherboard's EVGA uh, uh, X99 classified, so that that's pretty cool too. Memory is some G-Skill uh, 16 gigabyte 4x4. Uh, that's the Ripchow's 4 DDR4 memory kit. Uh, also quite nice. And then, of course, my graphics card here. CPU-Z will show you graphics, but um, GPU-Z shows you more graphics. So um, another thing you'll see with CPU-Z... I'm sorry, with GPU-Z, is uh, you can run multiple instances of it. So by running the software twice, I have my layout screen here that tells me uh, the GPU that I'm running, and if you mouse over anything, it will tell you what's what. But the, the key things we're going to keep, be keeping an eye on here uh, is the GPU clock and the default clock. So um, this is actually overclocked as 980s go right from the manufacturer, since this is a superclock version of the graphics card from uh, EVGA. Um, but we can see here the GPU base clock, which is 1266, you can also see the GPU boost clock, which is 1367, and then chances are once I actually start running a benchmark, even without any overclocking, uh, down here where I've opened up the sensors tab and I've shown a lot of the maximum values, we're going to see it overclock even more than 1367 right out of the box, and then by overclocking it further than that, I'm going to see if I can push it to around oh, the 1500 mark today. Um, but okay, so we got uh, GPU-Z running as well, and then of course we want Precision X, which I should already have preloaded. There we go. And before I even get into EVGA Precision X here and show you guys how to use it and how to uh, initiate your overclocking, what I'm actually going to do is run 3 Mark um, just with the stock values. And hey, Ultra just came out and I have a 4K monitor, so I'm going to run this on Ultra just for kicks. So uh, let me run this real quick, and then uh, I'll come right back and let you guys know what my baseline score is. Okay, sorry guys, I had to take a quick sidetrack. I actually ran the uh, 3D Mark uh, Fire Strike Ultra test one more time. Got a slightly lower score, but uh, still within margin of error. Reason is because it's not, uh, this, this 980 isn't boosting up as high as it was when I was testing a few days ago. I was actually getting closer to about 1380, which is only about 12, 13, 14 megahertz difference. Um, I think the main reason is that it's a little bit warmer today. Uh, GPU temps are actually getting up above 75 to 76, 77, um, which might mean that it's not boosting itself quite as high. That's that's my presumption at this point. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into some overclocking now that we have a couple baseline tests run with 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. And uh, now we can actually do some overclocking and see if we can boost that score up a little bit further. So when it comes to overclocking, you basically have two primary things that you can overclock. One is the GPU frequency, uh, and for that we have this slider here. This is the core clock, it's also known as, and when you mouse over here, uh, EVGA is going to give you a big pop-up with a bunch of stuff you can read about it, as, long as, as well as some hints. So that's uh, nice just from the get-go. You'll notice it starts at zero. That doesn't mean that the GPU frequency is at zero. It means this is working on an offset. So by increasing this, say, by 100, which you can actually key in if you want to be anal and do a round number. Um, so if you want to do it up by 100, it's going to add 100 uh, to the frequency, which is actually listed up here. So they have kind of a, a, an odometer looking display going on up here. Uh, they have a couple numbers like these little hashes, the white and the red are indicating your base clock and your boost clock, which right now is at 1266 for the white and uh, 1367 for the red. Um, right now, uh, it's also going to be telling you the frequency that it's running at, well, right now, the voltage that it's running at right, at right now, the temperature that it's running at right now, uh, and then there's a bunch of other stuff you can do in here. You'll notice uh, that there's two priorities you can set here for power target or temperature target. So um, if you're using any uh, NVIDIA graphics card that uh, features GPU boost uh, 1.0 or 2.0, this overclocking uh, tutorial applies to you. Um, but basically you have a power target and a temperature target. So the power target is uh, going by the total board power or, or how much uh, power the board is actually able to draw. This is where EVGA likes to say they're going to give you an advantage by doing lower power fans. That gives you more available total bo board power to use when you're overclocking. So um, your power target means that if your total board power was, say, 100 watts and you increase it to 110%, 
then it means that uh, the overclock is going to allow the board to pull 110 watts instead of 100. So um, that will increase up to about 124, um, which honestly you're safe just maxing this out if that's what you want to do. Uh, the other item here is GPU temperature target. Uh, and here you can actually go and tell it, um, I want you to be at max 79 degrees Celsius, or I want you to be at max 85 degrees Celsius if you're okay with the uh, card running a little bit hotter and with your uh, fans probably spinning a little bit faster too in that case. Um, those are the two things that you can set that will then affect how far uh, GPU Boost 2.0 will, will overclock or boost your GPU core clock. The other thing you can set here as far as overclocking is your memory clock and that's uh, also listed over here in GPU Z right now. We can see the memory is at 1753. Uh, so again, this is an offset, so if I wanted to try to run the memory at, say, uh, 1800, I could increase this by about 100 megahertz, and since it's still double data rate memory, it's going to double that. So if I hit apply here, after bumping that up by 100 on each of these, you'll notice it reflected over here in GPU-Z. That's why I like to keep this up at the same time. It's reflected up here um, in, in uh, Precision X as well, but I like to verify um, that it's taking when I do these things. So You'll see here the default clock went from 1266 to 1366, offset by 100, and the boost clock went from 1367 to 1467, also uh, offset by 100. Memory uh, at the same time went from 1753 to 1803, uh, that's 100 megahertz divided by 2 since it's double data rate. Um, and, and that's how you increase the frequency on all these things. Now, um, th if you're go starting this out from, uh, from a beginner standpoint and you're not really sure what to go for, um, then I recommend starting off with small incremental changes, probably anywhere in the 20 to 50 megahertz range. Uh, just add that on, run your benchmark again, and see if it runs smoothly and if you don't get any uh, fragmentation or particularly if your system locks up, that, then that means your overclock was successful, um, barring some further testing of course, and you can move on beyond that. Um, some other features that Precision X has uh, is the ability to keep track of certain things like what I'm actually doing down here with GPU Z and GPU Z. Um, so there's a bunch of uh, charts you can look at in here, but they're very small. If you double click it, it will pop out. And I like to keep that up there. Um, this is also nice because you can mouse over it and it will give you a little history uh, of a lot of the things with the system, like the power, the power draw, uh, the clock frequency, the GPU usage, uh, voltage, memory usage, all that good stuff. Um, EVGA, if you're watching this, uh, do a UI scaling on this, please, especially with 4K now, oh my gosh. The, the text is very, very tiny. It's still, still legible though. I like to keep that up while I'm benchmarking, that way I can look back over and see, uh, particularly if you're worried about the GPU throttling. The top right, you can look for a GPU clock uh, and you can see if that dipped down at all while you were running your testing and that there, there you would know, well, it probably got too hot. It throttled back the frequency and maybe you should change up some things. But okay, um, so what I'm gonna try to do is see if I can hit about 1500 megahertz on this card. Um, I'm actually not gonna go for memory overclock right now. Um, there's a school of thought that says if you overclock the GPU, you should overclock the memory too so the memory can keep up. NVIDIA tunes those so they're kind of in balance with each other, so that makes sense. Uh, the GTX 980 though has um, some special power delivery, uh, power sharing uh, features that have been built into the board, um, which has allowed some pretty substantial overclocks on just the GPU frequency without increasing the memory. Um, I think I should be able to hit about 1500 with this, which means I should only need about, what, another 33 on top of the 100? So let's go up to 133, and we'll hit apply, and then that should bring my total boost here to 1500 megahertz, and it might even go a little bit beyond that. So at this point I've hit apply, it's engaged here, and I can go ahead and run one more test uh, and see if this remains stable. Uh, and it is able to run the test all the way through and in particular if I increase my score. So here's the situation. Uh, what happened was I went to load up the game and basically nothing. I got to the loading screen, the screen went dark and uh, I could tell that it was trying to load it up but then it just pretty much failed. Now there's different types of things that can go wrong while you're benchmarking. This is known as a hard lock basically. I'm not getting any response from the keyboard. It's nothing to worry about but it does mean we're going to need to manually reset the computer. I'm just going to hit the restart button on the motherboard to do that. 
So I'm also discovering that Windows 8.1 uh, is doing some funny things with my UI as I switch back and forth between 4K and 1080. So that's why some of the stuff, the elements on screen, were very small. Maybe it's a little bit more legible now too, so that's a benefit. Okay, so getting past the hard lock, we must now go and uh, re regroup and say, okay, well, what could we have done a little bit differently? Um, I think one thing that would have been very important would be to increase the power target right there. Uh, you can also lock or unlock the, uh, the association between power target and temperature target. Um, I'm actually going to have it uh, uh, prioritize the temperature right now, although I found that that doesn't always seem to work. I'm going to go as high as 84, sure, why not? Uh, and then I'm just going to go back to that same overclock that I was going for. 133 megahertz, which should get me to that magical 1500 point, which I'm really hoping I can hit on this card. Um, now, the, the the other thing I can do here is to go to the overvoltage. Now, voltage is um, one of those things with overclocking, whether you're talking about a CPU or a GPU, I don't always recommend doing. I will do overvoltage uh, simply to see if I can achieve an overclock. However, uh, I don't like to run an overvolt overvolted overclock for a long period of time. So I'm going to do this just to see if I can hit uh, my target. I'll start at uh, 50 millivolts. Usually it's okay to just max that slider out, but uh, I'm going to be a little bit conservative for starters here. So everything's locked in again. I've got all my uh, testing, benchmarking, monitoring programs set up again. Let me just launch Steam. By the way, if you are running the 3D Mark demos, uh, or 3D Mark, turn off the demos. The benchmark will run a lot faster. So this is a good sign right from the get-go. Uh, the the benchmark is running. That's always good. Um, now you're going to notice as benchmarks go, choppiness is normal uh, as you're watching this. What you really want to be watching for is fragmentation. Any artifacts that appear on screen that shouldn't be there. If you see those, it means something is going wrong. Even though the benchmark might be able to complete and get all the way through and you might even get a score out of it, if you're seeing artifacting, it means that your overclock is not working as proper or, or as, as it should be and you should dial back your overclock in order to get to the stable point. Of course, as overclocking goes, typically uh, if you've overclocked too much, you'll have a hard lock, you'll have to restart completely. Uh, as you back things off, then you might see that you're able to get through benchmarks but with fragmentation, and then as you back things off more, you might be able to get through a benchmark, uh, hopefully with no hard lock and no fragmentation, and that should mean that it's stable. However, after that point is when you should do a further burn-in or longer-term testing to make sure that the heat isn't building up over time, in particular if you're trying to set up an overclock that you want to run 24-7. And there we go, uh, we have our score. I saw no fragmentation or anything like that, so my uh, my fixes seem to have worked. And here by comparison, I can see my uh, my first two scores of 32.49 and 31.94 now greatly improved up to 35.65. So that's a nice jump uh, going just just with an increase in the GPU frequency of about 133 megahertz, and that's pretty much what we should see is an increased number, and it needs to be more than say two, three, four percent to be outside the margin of error. Uh, we can also see some other stuff over here, like for instance, the GPU core clock did get some extra GPU boostiness going on, so it wasn't running at 1500, it was actually running at 1525. Pretty nice, so good to know I can do that. Uh, didn't even have to max out the over voltage, so that's cool. Temperature wise, like I said, it doesn't seem to like to, to, to increase the temperature higher. Like, it's even weird sometimes, like I Oh no, I guess we got up to 77 total, or 76 according to a uh, hardware monitor, but uh, right around 76, 77, which is what we were hitting before, but um, definitely much more stable this time, so that's pretty cool. Now this is just the starting off point um, for me. What I would want to do from here is try to try to achieve that overclock without the voltage increase. That would be nice to be able to do. Uh, try to see how far I could overclock with as much voltage as possible just to see what the card could, could, could do. Try to do a combination of uh, GPU frequency and memory frequency together to see if that provides additional benefits. Um, but overall, what I tend to look for is uh, what gives me uh, a nice boost over what the card shipped at uh, without using too much uh, extra power or generating too much extra heat. And particularly fan uh, noise can be an issue, so uh, monitoring the fan speed or, or, or uh, limiting the fan speed with the uh, functions over here for fan, fan speed and fan curve can also be a benefit. But of course, uh, keeping an eye on your temperatures and uh, everything is, is very important from the start. Oh, and also uh, tracking your results. I need to get a screen. I need to get a screenshot here. 
And that is how to benchmark your GTX 980. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Let me know how your overclocking experience has gone down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like and share this video if it gives you a warm and comforting feeling, and we'll see you next time.